A customer brought this 1905 Ithaca double hammer gun into the retail shop and asked if I would consider doing a complete restoration on it. He told me that this was part of his family's legacy and that he wanted it to survive, to be passed on to the next generation. I said yes. So we started by taking a complete set of survey photos to document the before and after. And then I began the long process of tearing the gun down and starting the restoration. This video is a compilation of work we did repairing and restoring the 117 year old buttstock over the last eight months. Tearing down this shotgun was an interesting experience. I'd never been in a gun like this before. Looking closely at the stock, we found that both side panels were cracked or split. Someone had tried to repair them and doing the work had over sanded and destroyed the decorative side panels. They sanded away much of the checkering and added back a shellac finish. One of the things that is concerning me is that there is a large split that goes right down through the entire center of this it is not and you can see it up on this this end up in here as well so we are going to have to figure out a way to deal with that now I'm probably going to have to rebuild or reconstruct these panels because they're missing This little piece of wood had been nailed to the top of this um, this gun stock, and we need to get this attached more permanently. And in order to do that, I've got to do several things. And one of the things that I have to do early on is I have to remove any contamination from this area in the gun stock. So we're going to do that a couple ways. We're probably going to use this pick and try to pick away any of the any of the thicker residue that we need to get rid of. But mostly what we're going to rely on is acetone. And the acetone is going to help break down both the oils that may have seeped in over the years, plus uh, any of the shellac or, or finished residue that got in there when the repair was uh, done first. I'm ready to glue up these two parts of this gun stock together. The small part has to get uh, glued into the, the main stock. Today I've got to build a couple dowels and I'm going to use brass and, and the reason for the brass is it's pretty inert. It's not going to get in there and over the years turn into rust. 
Uh, so we'll use the brass and uh, we need to turn the brass down to a size that's small enough to fit into the small surfaces that we're dealing with. Alright, there we are. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is set the stock up on the bridge port and get everything aligned and then we're going to drill two holes. Now one of the things that I want to do is I only want to go down about a hundred, about, I don't know, a quarter inch, 250 thousandths maybe. I don't need this hole to be particularly deep. Um, just deep enough to secure that dowel. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's check and make sure that the dowel fits in the hole that we just drilled, and it does. Now we have both holes in. And put the pins in. Okay. And we're going to set this thing up. One of my favorite tools for clamping this stuff on is actually duct tape. I'm able to spread the loads over a broader area. And I like that a lot. Another piece. That is going to look good when it's done. The epoxy has had 24 hours to set, so it's time to pull off the tape and see what we ended up with. I want to introduce you to Mark Adams. Uh, Mark and I have been friends for for years. Mark is a is a um, world re renowned, recognized conservator uh, of antiquities mm -hmm. and antique finishes. Am I correct? I am. Today, I asked Mark to come in, and I asked him to come in because of the Ithaca uh, restoration project that I'm working on. I've got a um, I've got to to glue up a couple cracks in this gun stock, maybe four, five, eight, ten thousands at the most across. Mm -hmm. And I was asking Mark uh, one day here recently, what would be the best way to get in and clean out the residue, the oils that are in those cracks? Because I have to epoxy them together. The first thing I think is we need to extract the oils. What I want to do in this particular, I think that's where we're talking? Yeah, right along the edge. Right along that edge. Uh, I brought some hypodermic needles. Yeah. I came prepared and brought acetone. You've talked about acetone that you'd used, and we've discussed that about oily woods. I brought a couple things. Uh, this is a, uh, a 6 cc 
um, syringe and uh, I have a 23 gauge needle and I'm going to come in uh, at a couple different angles. I'll probably come in from the end, I'll come in from the top and we're just going to very gently, I'm, I'm thinking some of these accretions may be acting as an adhesive okay. in here. And so as we do this we're going to be just working this and then these cotton swabs are as we move this then these accretions will start coming out and I want to do this a number of times so that essentially this is clear. I can actually inject and then I'm going to pull back and you'll watch it'll begin sucking up. You'll notice that the acetone in here begins you'll actually see it'll start getting dirty on you and it's going to happen as we progress. You know that these oils have saturated into the a couple cell, yeah. cells deep. Yeah. And so um, about an oily wood, this is not an oily wood, but it is a wood right now that is oily. Has, is oily right? <laughs> and so I think of always in, in dealing with rosewood or teak and other oily woods, I will clean it until I see no color come back out. On the Ithaca, we were having to clean out all the oils and junk inside the splits and the cracks. I've been doing that a little bit every day over the last several days. Wanted to make sure that I got this as clean as I can before I added the epoxy. So today, we're going to add the epoxy to, to the various cracks in the Ithaca gun stocks. Now, one of the nice things about this epoxy um, is it's thin enough that it will actually collapse into the into the splits or into the breaks under its own weight. All right, uh, let's squish this up. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, the next thing I need to do, I want to mill away these panels so that I can do an applique or apply another thin piece of wood over it so that I can reconstruct those side panels. Uh, that's probably the next project you're going to see on this Ithaca. The plan is to, is to replace those side panels. Start out by, by putting it on the mill and milling those panels flat and I'll talk you through the process as I do that. Now I have this um, this later Ithaca. It is the same but different. Its shape, its form, it's it's all pretty much the same. The forearm is pretty close. The, the buttstock is pretty close. But what is really unique about this thing is there's two things. First off, um, I've got these panels, and I can now trace these panels on this um, this newer one. But these these shapes, these dimensions, are, are virtually identical, and um, I'm going to be able to pull patterns off from this to get it over to here, and be pretty confident that my my panels, my pointy little panels, are exactly where they need to be. So my goal, if you remember right, is I want to get these brass screws in here. And I'm going to come in from both sides, I think, and put a screw in from this end. And then another screw in from this side. The epoxy is holding up really nice, but I want to just give it a little bit extra strength by adding these screws. So I want to mill the flat off first, so that I get a nice flat surface that I can glue the appliques to, but below those appliques I want to 
drill and counterbore for these brass screws and then get those in so that those are hidden below the applicator. Brass screws are terrible. They're terrible for breaking. They're terrible for stripping. But it's it's an inert material that's hopefully, or not hopefully, that will not rust inside the stock forever and ever. Today we're going to uh, cut and install the applique or additional wood to the side panels of that buttstock on the, on the Ithaca. And to get that done, what I need to do is I need to get some, some good smooth or, or clearly cut mating surfaces so that the, the cut that I put on the, the, the side of the gun stock is going to fit or match up very, very well to these, to these appliques, to these blocks. Now, um, I sliced off a piece of uh, walnut that the grain matched fairly closely the, the color and the straightness of the grain on the original, on the original gun stock. Taken that piece of slab that I cut off and I've cut it into two smaller Two smaller sections and I'm going to mill those sections on the mill to get that nice mating surface. The mating surfaces that I cut on the bridge port really enhance or show the grain very very well. What I do have to do though, is I have to orient these in this direction to make sure that, that, that those bandings are going to go in the direction that I want them to go. So that this nice dark band here is sort of picking up this band and moving all the way forward to the, to the front of this. I did a template, is I'm gonna be able to trace this out then I'm going to bandsaw away this excess material and having completed that, we're ready to glue them or epoxy them onto the, the stock itself. Okay, so we've got our two, two appliques all cut. clamp. I've got my applique and we're ready to glue it up. Okay. It's time to unclamp them and see how this all turned out. So this is what we ended up with and it's all nice and solid. So the epoxy held really well. We're going to mill these panels down so that they're same height as the receivers. And when that's done, then we'll start doing the shaping and get those nice pointy panels that, that is typical of these old, older shotguns. So using the French curve, I can then come back and draw that line, flip it over to the section that is the bottom, and I draw that. 
and I have a panel that should closely replicate what was there. This gives me lines of reference that I can begin to shape this to. So I'm just carving away this excess material and I'm bringing it back to the pencil line. So hopefully you're seeing the panel begin to reveal itself here a little bit. Using a curved chisel, trying to create that undercut that, that is in the original. So what I'm using is this rubber sanding block and it has the, a radius on it and it gives me some really fine control not only of the sandpaper but how I create these radiuses. I'm using 100 grit paper. This week I'm trying to repoint the the checkering on the on this 1905. I got it in my checkering cradle. Now, as has been the problem with this stock from day one, you know, we're dealing with all the oils that that have accumulated in the wood pores, and the checkering is no exception to this. So I'm finding that, that it works well. If I put a little bit of acetone on the wood. Now some of this checkering has been worn down just from years, decades of use, and checkering is a series of small diamonds, and we're simply trying to recreate those diamonds. I'm using a magnifying glass because quite literally, first off, at my age I'm half blind, but the other problem is these are so small and fine that it helps give me the additional um, vision I need to see all this. So I've mixed up some of my secret sauce and I'm uh, going to add color. So I've chosen to add uh, a little bit of red in. Um, Walnut tends to have a reddish tone or tint to it. So I'm going to add just a dab, add it into the finish. We'll do this in, I mentioned in the last video that we're gonna do this in multiple color coats. So let's get that first coat on. The idea is always to do to do thin coats. That really brought the richness out in this stock. That was that's what it needed. <clears throat> um, you can start to see that orange, that red orange, starting to show up in the in the color.
Today's the big day. We're going to remove that blue tape and then add back some darker uh, stain to that check ring to sort of enhance it or make it pop out. This is somewhat of a delicate job, believe it or not, because the tape, when you peel it, it kind of wants to go all in its own direction. And it can be a little frustrating because you want to just pull it off in one sheet. And the tape does not always want to cooperate. Alright family, there we go. It's all done. Got the tape off. That's better. I'm telling you what guys, um, comparing this to what it looked like when I started a year ago, um, what an amazing transformation. I'm gonna let this dry for the next eight or 10 hours and I'll come back tonight and put on the second coat. And tomorrow, I'm gonna to give you guys the beauty shots.